Thanks for joining in episode three of Sports and Ish with Rachel Lee and Misty V. We've got a special guest with us today, Greg Garza. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Greg. How's it going? Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. I'm excited. I love the uh, the rhyme you have there from the very beginning. Good stuff. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> a little catchy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am ridiculously happy to have Greg Garza on because he is literally one of my best friends ever. So right now I have two of my very best friends on with me and this is like the best show ever. I mean, it's only episode three, but I'm still really, really happy. So we're good. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Greg, we're so pumped to have you on as our first guest. So thanks for being with us and um, we have not met in person, but I've heard so many awesome things about you. So I'm really excited to get to know you better and ask some fun questions and all that good stuff. So as long as there's banter here, I am. <laughs> we, we have lots. <laughs> We're good with that. <laughs> all right. So Greg, let's tell everybody who you are. So I want to, I, I mean, I know that you've played soccer for a very long time. Uh, You've played all over, like in so many countries. Obviously, I met you when you were at, at the end of your career there in Cincinnati. But, of course, I always found your Tijuana stories the most exciting. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your career in soccer and how it started. How old were you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, gosh, Cincinnati was the last two years of my career. And I remember landing in Cincinnati. And the first person that like saw me and recognized me was like, oh, welcome Welcome to the cursed city. <laughs> uh, we got last place two years in a row. So thank, thank you, Cincinnati. <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, I mean, for me, it's, you know, I have got to play professionally for almost 13 years. Um, I played all over the world, played in Portugal, played in Mexico, played in Brazil, um, and then finished off the last four years of my career back in the States, which was kind of weird because I was back home side. Um, but, you know, I think... Being in the States for my last four years really brought, you know, my childhood friends back, my family together again. Um, you know, I, I got to do so many cool things within my whole entire career. A lot of stories come from so many different cultures, meet a lot of different people. I speak three different languages fluently. Um, and I think what are they? Really, uh, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Oh, very cool. <laughs> so for me, soccer, I, I love all sports. Honestly, I if soccer is on the TV and baseball is on the TV, I'd probably rather watch baseball. Uh, <laughs> but I think just because I did it for so long. But I will say this. There is not another sport within the world that brings so many people together, no matter what language you speak, um, no matter where you're from. I mean, even in the Cincinnati locker room, I think we probably had over 10 languages spoken. Um, and it brings just so many people together. And that's what I loved so much, much about the sport was just um, the diverse culture, you know, bomb that you had in each locker room and it, and it created awesome relationships. So, um, I am now unhappily retired. Is that how you would say it? Um, I'm still recent, recent retired, uh, been retired for a little over a year now, still getting used to life being retired. Um, but I had a, a very fortunate and, and, and a blessed career for a, a pretty long time. Nice. Very nice. And you were also part of uh, Atlanta United when you guys won the MLS Cup. Was that, um, that was right before Cincinnati, right? That, that yeah, was like that a, was in uh, 2018. So I won the MLS Cup in 2018. I won the Mexican Championship in 2012. Uh, I got to represent my country on many different occasions, uh, which yeah. was really fun. Um, yeah. Honorable moments within my career playing for my country was, was amazing. But, uh, you know, yeah, I had a very fun career. Um, I miss it. Uh, but the one thing I miss the most is hopefully what we will have here is, is the banter inside the locker room. <laughs> I guess I guess where I played, the more veteran I became, uh, people would always tell me the more a-hole I became. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite thing about you though. <laughs> fantastic dry humor that I always had uh, with everybody. And I think that's what created that camaraderie within the locker rooms, right? You need, you need that person on every team to kind of, have a person to where anyone can make fun of everybody, right? Um, <laughs> in a very loving and charismatic way. And uh, I think if I were to pick out, you know, something that was my strength, uh, it was always bringing t people together and, and in creating that teamwork, hopefully to make that dream work, which unfortunately did not happen in Cincinnati. 
know. No, I mean, I, <laughs> it, it did. I mean, those were my years there. It did, but it didn't. I get it, though. But, Greg, you were probably one of the few people that could walk in, hand me, like, five insults, and I was on the floor just dying laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can make fun of me like Greg, and I love it. Like, this is good. Keep it coming. <laughs> Let's just say, Missy, you had to wear leggings every single day. <laughs> <laughs> so, Greg, what was your favorite locker room out of all the teams that you played for? What would you say was the most fun? You know what? There's, I get that question a lot, but I loved playing in Mexico. I played in Mexico for five years. It was probably the peak of my career um, on the soccer side of it. But there is just a difference in the Latin community and within Latin culture that they have so many sayings that just don't work in English. Um, and it is it is to where I think that's probably where I learned that a-holism. <laughs> it was a place to where everybody is doing it. And that's what creates you know, that, that good camaraderie within, within every team that I played for in Mexico. And I got to play for one specific team for almost five years um, and just had an absolute blast. Uh, one difference there that they do have and that we didn't, I didn't have any other place that I played was that, you know, every middle of the week, you would always have like a team barbecue together. Um, oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, that's so cool. you finish yeah. training and then you would go out to where the field was or where the stadium, uh, they'd have, you know, chefs or whoever's making the food every single Wednesday afternoon, you're staying, you know, four or five extra hours after training uh, because you're spending a lot more time with the guys that are in your locker room, probably more than your family, right? You're more than mm -hmm. you family, you're, you're with the guys that you're yeah. in our, in our case, it's, it's year round, right? Uh, you know, within footballs and baseballs and basketball, those guys play six, seven months and they get another three months, four months off. And then they get back into the, to the mix of it for us. I mean, yeah. for the very first you know, nine years of my career, I maybe had 10 days max every single year of, of vacation time. So you're spending a lot of time uh, with the guys. And I think to have that, those special moments within Mexico really brought everybody together. So th that was my, my favorite locker room being, being wherever in Mexico, because there was just um, a different culturism that was within uh, those places that just brought everybody together in a very special way. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, and it's funny that you say that because I was just telling somebody the other day, they were like, you know, soccer, especially the NFL guys this time of year. And I try to explain to them, like, there's not really an off season in soccer. And, and if you do have four or five weeks, everybody plans their weddings on those weekends. Mm -hmm. So every weekend off is going to somebody's wedding. So you don't have any time to yourself. It's just, that's the way it is. Most definitely. I, I'm, I'm now single dad and <laughs> divorce but my ex-wife is still my best friend <clears throat> when i was 18 years old and i had a game the same day so that kind of <laughs> went straight to school i was like all right babe love you and boom I'll see you after the game. Yeah. so i love it that's that's the kind of storyline of every single soccer player you know it's just you're you're it's 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 non-stop it's go 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 um all year yeah. round right? yeah, um, yeah you know we we call it you know in today's world we call it just that 24 7 athlete Right. You're, yeah. you're constantly, you know, I think one of the things that I hated most when I played was going to like an appearance or going to a barbecue or, you know, seeing people that don't know soccer. Um, and everybody would always ask, oh, my gosh, your life is, you know, what, what time you wake up to get to work and what time you finish? Um, and I would always say, well, you know, I probably get to the training facility. One of the earliest ones there, I get there at seven 30 and I probably leave by one, one thirty. And they would always say, oh, my gosh, you, it's, it must be so easy. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I always thought to myself, oh, what a what an asshole, right? Because for us, it was you know, when you finish and you get home by you know two o'clock, whatever you did the rest of that day really you know prepared you if you're going to be successful the next, right? right. Um, whereas if you have, I guess you say a, a regular job, right? You can go home, you can pop open a beer, and you can sit down on your recliner and watch, you know. And for us, we couldn't, you know, we had to focus on our nutrition. We had to focus on going an extra hour to the gym to work on you know, flexibility, all these different things, your rest, how much rest you got. There were so many things that, you know, we call 24 seven athlete. Um, but for us, it was all year round three, six, five. So, um, yeah. that, that stuff I do not miss. At all. <laughs> it's just the band. The band You're enjoying is, yourself. You're having a couple beers. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't drink. So I just, watch, I just watch you guys get tips. <laughs> there you go. It's probably more fun that way, right? <laughs> <laughs> Greg was always the first one in and I remember the med staff complaining like listen 
we told the guys to be here at seven, but you know, Greg, he's going to be here at six thirty. <laughs> like, that's because I, that's because I need an hour with you, and I need two hours. <laughs> right? Yeah. I will tell you this: I miss a lot of different people touching my body to make me feel good. I will tell you that. <laughs> that is one thing because I mean, now it's you know, if I go play a pickup game or I go have fun with the guys, still kick the ball around, and I'm like, I get home and I'm like, ow, I need, <laughs> I need Missy right now. <laughs> Magic hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was magic hands. Um, one, I was recalling one of my favorite stories to Rachel the other day. We were talking about you. So I think it was like preseason 2019. We were IMG Academy. And <laughs> so I did not know soccer players. You know, this was not the world that I, I came from at all. And I remember you guys were out training and I'd went out for a run and they had left like this all day breakfast fruit yogurt bar out for all the teams that were there. And I came back from a run and this bald guy with like this scraggly beard was just standing there like peeling an orange and he was staring at me and I approach the little bar and he sees, I had shorts on cause I'd been on a run. And he sees this tattoo on my leg and he bends down. He's like, Oh man, that's a great tattoo. And I'm like, Oh, ugh, whose coach is this touching my leg? Like, ugh, This old guy. <laughs> so the next day we are scrimmaging Colorado Rapids and I'm sitting with you in the stands. And I see this guy take the field to warm up with goalie gloves. And I'm like, that guy plays for a team. And you're like, Misty, (laughs) you were laughing. You could hardly contain yourself. You said, how do you not know who that is? I said, I don't know. (laughs) Who is that? You said, Misty, that's Tim Howard. (laughs) I said, who? You said, you you should probably Google him. I don't even know how you got a job (laughs) in soccer. (laughs) How did you get a job in soccer? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know, people. (laughs) You, you had magic hands. That's what it was. <laughs> uh, that that guy is, I mean, very well known, right? <laughs> Not to me. No, no <laughs> big deal. Uh, I don't know what tattoo he was pointing to. <laughs> it was <went, don't> stop. <laughs> It was Rocky. It was not the dolphin tattoo. It was Rocky. Okay. Yeah, uh, it wasn't the dead fish one. <laughs> uh, it was not. <laughs> no, it was not. It was. Uh, it was Rocky. I don't even think he saw. He didn't see the dolphin. It's not a dead fish. <laughs> he saw the dolphin. Uh, you know what's, what? I love about Missy Rage is that, like, whenever she gets around, I mean. It's so funny because I, I'm originally from Texas. I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have a Southern accent, but every time I say, you don't have that. Yeah. But every time Missy gets around me, like she starts to develop her Southern accent. So I, like, if I'm around my mom. My mom is very cowgirl, Texan, like very Southern. But if I'm around her a long time, then, you know, I usually kind of, I guess you could say maybe little bring it on. People have told me that in the past. <laughs> I don't even have the Southern accent and Missy gets around me. <laughs> She's like fellow Texan. All right. You know, I'll, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So out of all of that, so you were only in Cincinnati for what, two seasons. And I think I missed, I missed your last season there. I think I, I was gone by like May, 2020. I think I left during the stay at home mm-hmm. orders, but you, you went to the bubble in Orlando, right? Did you do the whole bubble thing? I did. That was the worst experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fact of getting tested every single day mm. um, are, are nfl guys still doing that are they still getting no. yeah they're gone no. finish done. with them done i know it still kept going for quite a while even after yeah. COVID was kind of you know beyond its point um but yeah. you know, i think uh just just the fact that we had to get tested every day we had two false positives within the bubble so just being quarantined i think it was like 48 hours within your room yeah. um and bringing you peanut mm-hmm. butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch um and dinner was was i mean you know you really you really understand people that are alone right and, right. and you know the isolation we would the, the craziest thing is that we would look outside and we'd see the NBA guys like driving in the boats, um, you know, having the time of their yeah, lives. Yeah. Like, hey. You guys are like, wait, from my window. <laughs> one, guy was driving, one, one of the NBA guys, I think I don't remember who it was. He was driving through Atlanta. He went to magic city to the strip club here, uh, the, the most well-known strip club. Then he was going to the bubble and it was like, here we are. And <laughs> We could walk from our room to go get our food, eat super quick and could not hang out with anyone. Right. Uh, Mm -hmm. And go back to your room and then complete isolation. 
I, I learned how to play Fortnite with my kids. <laughs> um, it was like the only way to connect with my kids rather than calling them, hey, how was school today? Good. What'd you do? <laughs> What'd you learn? Nothing. But if I get those kids on their Fortnite or oh. whatever, Call of Duty or whatever they're playing, it's like they will open up and just <laughs> tell you whatever. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't believe what happened to Melanie in class today. It was like, oh my gosh, all right. I got to learn how to play this video game so I can connect with my kid. <laughs> so do you still play with them now? Oh yeah. That's, that's Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I had touched any video game for probably... I mean, since my first child was born, I mean, I never was a big video game guy or kid, um, but you know, I was always so focused on being the greatest professional I could be. Um, but I think once my kid probably turned about six, seven, it got to that point where I was like, all right, this guy's, this guy needs me to play with him to kind of connect with him on that level. And uh, now I play when they come over or when they're at their mom's house and I can kind of connect with them as much as possible. That's what we do. We, we play video games. Nice. Very nice. Now, how many you have? You have three. Three, three boys. Children? Three boys. That's right. Yeah. Three monkeys. Yeah. That yeah. More <laughs> uh, it goes fast. It goes really, really fast. So I know that you also recently had a birthday. And uh, anyways, uh, uh, happy belated birthday. I wanted yes. to ask you what what does it feel like being in your forties now? Is that <laughs> stop? <laughs> <laughs> What does it feel like for you to be in your 50s? <laughs> oh, <laughs> good. You, might not be friends, you might not be friends after this. Uh, after this as I, yeah. Greg, I don't think we can have you back on here anymore. So sorry. <laughs> Rach, how old are you? 31. You're 30. So you're 90. You're what, 91? Yeah, 91, baby. Sweet. I'm 91. Mm-hmm. Yes, love that. What uh? So you must just recently turn, or what? When did you? Uh, yeah, May. I'm a Taurus. Okay, cool. That that's always your go. Like that's your go-to. You have to say May. I'm a Taurus. Or- oh, absolutely. Well, everybody asks. You know, that's it. <laughs> signs are you, matter. Are you a Taurus though? Like, are you a true Taurus? I don't know. I mean, I'm not like super super into that stuff. Okay. Um, I'll like. Right. Yeah, that was the first. Read it here and there if it's up, but yeah. Okay. Right. Are you are you into that kind? Are you? I mean, I mean, I, I yeah. I mean, I guess I could say I'm 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 a Leo, right? So, I mean, Misty knows. <laughs> Misty Misty knows. Uh, We're both Leos. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. I mean, I guess I guess like if I read the description off like zodiac sign yeah. or whatever it is, right? I can say, oh, you know what? That's that's probably me. Yeah, somewhat of me, but uh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess that's, that's the first thing everybody always asks, right? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting that you, that that's the first thing you went with. I don't, I don't know why, but yeah, I would, I would say the same thing. Yeah. I feel like reading it when I read up on some of that stuff, it's kind of, kind of right, I guess. So, yeah. I don't even think of it. I never even think of it. I don't even think about somebody's birthday until it's like, oh shoot, did I miss their birthday this year? That is the only time I think about it. That is it. I don't. So bad with that too. I'm the most with names as well. I'm so bad with names. (laughs) I know I've had to start getting better with work, like remembering people's names. So I like try and find some sort of connection of like, or repeat it in my head. I'm awful with that stuff. Getting better. Getting better. Yeah. Getting I think, better. I think I would be, I, I like, I just call everybody bro and buddy. <laughs> right? uh, exactly. if, if I don't know their name. I'll just say, Hey buddy, you know, how you, <laughs> it's oh, the same it's been so long since I've seen you, you do it. You're looking great, bud. Look good, buddy. <laughs> and so then, my, if I'm with my... somebody else, Sorry, yeah. I'll no, no, somebody no. else, and that person leaves, and I'll look to that person and be like, include that. <laughs> <laughs> See, in that case, I tell my friends, this is really bad, okay? I probably shouldn't share this, but um, <laughs> if I don't know someone's name, I will introduce my friend and have them be like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. What's your name? That's like my go to thing. Like, okay. hey, if I introduce you and not them, it's because I don't know their name. I'm sorry. <laughs> So just like jump in so we can both get to know their name. <laughs> that is a clutch move right there. I'm, yeah. I, might, I might steal that one from you. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully people aren't listening and I do that to them. So sorry. Well, it's episode three. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. We don't yeah, right. 
<laughs> I love it. So that's so my little fun. tip. So little trick. So Greg, did you have any other nicknames in soccer that we're unaware of? Like talking. Oh um, yeah. Gosh, I, I had quite a few. I, in, when I played in Mexico, I had tons. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously, I have like, the Captain America ta- tattoo. So I mean, I was kind of like a big superhero chin. My chin is giant. So I guess that's uh, that's where I got it from. I don't know, um, but everybody that, that was like or Johnny Bravo. I think I told you that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? yeah. I've gotten Johnny Bravo before. Like, <laughs> 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 I know that. Awesome. Um, let's see what else. I'm thinking. Um, so there's a, a famous boxer when I played in Guadalajara in, in Mexico. He's from Guadalajara. His name's Canelo Alvarez. Um, and, and he's, and I mean, his name is Saul Canelo Alvarez. And people used to call me Canelo all the time when I played in Mexico. Uh, here in the States, um, I don't know. I've gotten so many, like, in Cincinnati at the airport, there was this woman that was working at, like, Wendy's. I don't know where, I don't, I don't even know where she was. It's like, the food, the food court. And she was like, oh, my God, you look just like JT. And I was like, no way, you cannot get it. <laughs> I've gotten so many. I've gotten so many. Um I don't know, just uh, tons of different people that I guess I got one today. Somebody said I look like a uh, Puck Puckerman. Do you know who that is? No. Me. I don't even know. They just sent me a, a picture and like you like Puck Puckerman. I, like, I don't know who that is. But yeah. did you look it up? I did. Yeah, yeah. You can look it up. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. I just, but, <laughs> yeah, different different people say I look. I don't know. Yeah, that, but uh, nicknames that I've had. I don't know. I always tell people when you're on the field, it's so hard to hear people, um, you know, just because of all the noise. But I, whenever I'm with other people, I'll always find a way to say their name as quickly as possible. Right. When you're calling for the ball. Um, so I was probably like G or double G a lot, like GG. Um, GG. That's how I remember oh. you. GG. Yeah. So just like, you know, something really short and simple and, and kind of savvy to, get somebody's attention on the field. I think, you know, I was always yeah. like, as well, if I was calling for the ball from somebody, I always wanted to say the quickest thing possible. Right. <laughs> yes. So who was your favorite coach ever out of all the teams that you played with all the years? What did you have like 15 years playing? Who was your favorite coach ever? My favorite coach was, man, I've had a couple, I, probably the two championship teams that I, that I played with. Yeah. Um, one in Mexico, this is really funny because this guy, he was such, they're, they're complete opposite, which is crazy. Um, the one in Mexico was such a player's coach. He's the one that used to do the, the, you know, the barbecues every Wednesday, um, which yeah. is really normal in Mexico, but he was always a part of it. So awesome. He always played games with us as well. Um, he would hop in training sessions with us and play. Uh, he was an ex player. So, um, but, but this is super cool. He would smoke the fattest cigar <laughs> while, he us, while he's giving us our pregame speech <laughs> his fat cigar in his mouth uh, oh yeah and and i mean the whole locker room and everywhere he would just reek cigar which i mean it's an okay smell i guess but um you know just everywhere he went before games it was like his habit you know his habitual routine that he had his superstition he was he was argentinian so they're super superstitious I'm also very superstitious, very super superstitious. Um, but just the fattest cigars he would always smoke before games. And um, he was an awesome guy, just well connected with everybody. I didn't really play that much under him, but I still respected him very much. And I think if you can do that as a coach, you know, you're dealing with so many different egos, you're dealing with so many personalities, you're different with so many different characters, leaders, yeah. whatever it may be, different types of, of people. Um, and if you're able to make everybody feel comfortable and make everybody feel wanted and needed, um, then you're then you're doing great as a coach. I think that's the most important thing you can have as a coach is even the guys that aren't getting much playing time, even the guys that aren't getting as many opportunities because essentially only 11 guys can play and you usually have, right. you know, close to 30 on a roster. Right. So you have 14, 15 guys that might not ever see the field. Um, but if you can keep that great connection and that gate, that great, you know, bond and camaraderie with everyone, especially with yourself, I think you're, you're a great coach. And he was able to do that, which is, um, which was pretty special. Nice. Uh, the other coach that I had was here in Atlanta where we won the championship here in Atlanta as well in the MLS in 2018. And, 
he was the type of coach that fought for his players, um, didn't really care about the management, didn't care about the GMs, didn't care about the presidents. Didn't, he was going to do everything within, you know, um, what was sacred, right? We always, he always called the locker room sacred, right? Um, and it was only a place and it was only, you know, and I think that's something very important to have. Uh, we called him Tata, which means grandpa. Well, he was Argentinian as well. They were both Argentinian. I love it. So, yeah. But uh, Tata means grandpa. And I think that's how we really viewed him um, as, as just someone we could respect at a, at a different level. And uh, he had that respect from all of us. So uh, those were probably my two favorite coaches within my career. I had so different, so many, um, so many different personalities, so many different playing styles uh, that you agree with, that you don't agree with, but um, a lot of pretty cool coaches that I had within my career. Very cool. There was some good that came out of Cincinnati. I know there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good from Cincinnati. It's 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 a great family oriented place. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I think I always think back and I was like, man, Cincinnati would have been the very first great place for me to start my career. Right. Because then I would have been like, oh my gosh, I keep going to all these different cooler places. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Cincinnati was the last place of my career oh. and it was like oh my gosh I lived here 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 oh my gosh what the how hell did I get here <laughs> how did I end up in this freaking minus 11 weather when I no. landed and it was a freaking yeah. snowstorm yeah. and I was just like I, I was thinking to myself as we landed and into the storm I was like oh my what did I just sign <laughs> Was that the first, like, when you came to That was my experience. I was ended in a blizzard. Yeah. That was my January, like, well. Welcome, Greg. I had turned my quad with the national team, which sucked. Like, my my career was always dealt with major injuries. Um, And I tore my, I think I tore my quad uh, with the national team. And then I was just landing. I went to go, and I was supposed to see the, the med team. I think I saw Misty, like, the next day or something. It was absolutely freezing cold. Um, yeah. I just remember getting dropped off by the Uber and waiting at the, um, <laughs> waiting at Nipper right? because that's where the locker room we was. We were in, that's right. We, we were still at Nippert. I remember that. Yeah. And I, I just remember standing outside and be like, oh my gosh, like I am absolutely so cold. <laughs> Um, and didn't know where it was, right? And that was like <laughs> my first experience of Cincinnati and getting told that I was getting mm-hmm. her city within sports. So I was with FC Cincinnati before the MLS days, and we had, and had I mean, success. we had success. Yeah. I mean, and then, then we didn't. <laughs> I remember was, actually, was, yeah, go ahead. I was, uh, I was actually telling uh, one of my NFL guys this a few days ago. I said it was weird because. When it came to working with SC Cincinnati, I was one of the few females that even worked directly with the team or even traveled with the team. And I remember realizing just just where my alliance was with the team because I think we had like a, some sort of fundraiser or charity event or something. So you have like all the coaches and like the front office staff and everybody on the left of the room. And here I sat with all the guys on the right. <laughs> Because that's where I spent most of my time. It was always with the guys. It was never with anybody at all over here. It was with everybody over here. That's where I felt comfortable all the time. Every time. No, and to sure. this day, I still play I still play games on my phone. Like we still play chess and checkers with a handful of the guys. So it is what it is. I think some of those relationships, even if they were like some of the weirdest times ever, some relationships you'll just have forever. Uh, I will I will vouch for that because they're they're the best relationships that I have had or that I had within my career, if I were to tell you how many players I still speak to um, over the phone or over text, uh, only one hand can cover how many players I still speak to. And I played for almost 13 years and played for tons of different teams. Um, and I just think, you know, within the, within the competitive atmosphere, right. It's, you're dealing with, so you're dealing with, you're, you're making friends everywhere you go, but it's just at a competitive you know, environment that, you know, once you finish there, you go into the next and you go into the next, you go into the next. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things to where it's a, it's a dicey situation because you're becoming really good friends. But if you, if you're the one that has that opportunity, like you're grabbing onto it and you're not really caring who gets left behind. Right. Um, And so I think the friends that I have after my career um, are the ones that I knew that if I was under the bus, that those guys, both of us would have lifted each other up. Right. For uh, sure. And, and, you know, that's it's, but what I, what I was going with is that the best relationships that I had within my career were always the equipment managers, the med staff, 
um, the massage therapists, you know, all these people that you're spending tons of time with, but really don't have a true opinion on what's happening within the yeah. team, within, mm-hmm. within your season, right? They're just yeah. always there to support you. And you talk about family, you talk about your issues, you talk about, you know, personal things that are going on. It's like, um, it's like having your barber, right? For you guys, when you guys do your nails, you're, you're talking, you know, or when you're getting your hair done, your, your hair did, right? You're, you're, <laughs> talking, you're, talking, you're, you're, you're opening up with that person and you're talking about anything and everything that's kind of going on in life, right? right. Um, for me, it was always, I always had that, you know, special moment and that vulnerability to open up much more rather than open up with, you know, guys that were on my team, um, with, with people that were in the, you know, med rooms or massage therapists and uh, the people right. that I still talk to today, I mean, including Misty, um, are, are all those people. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So you've been retired for a little bit now. Um, what is it like being like only 31 or retired? Like what, like what, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Like, and I say that because I'm much older. So when I look at my retirement, it's like so much closer, but for someone like you and and any professional athlete, you've already had this long career, like playing for 15 years is it, it takes its toll on your body. So even though you're young, it is time to retire. So where do you see yourself in five years, even 10 years now that you're retired? Um, in five years, I see myself with an absolute complete hip replacement. <laughs> uh, no, actually I'm, I'm not kidding, but um, no, I think, you know, I, it's, it's, it's an interesting one, right? Because, you know, you look at the average, career within an NFL player, right? I think it's it's two and a half years for an average NFL player, two and a half years playing the game professionally. Right. Um, And you look at an average, you know, soccer player's career, it's, you know, usually about, I mean, I played almost 13 years, so it's usually about that, right? 13. Yeah. If you play over 15 years, then you are a a big time vet, right? You've really taken really good care of your body. Um, So I I had a pretty long career and and a pretty awesome one, but uh, it's it's crazy because I dedicated, you know, I left home at the age of 12 to follow my dream, right? Um, so I did that for 17, 18 years, um, and I dedicated my life to just doing one thing and one thing only. You know, obviously, I still did college online. I still got, you know, two degrees under my belt and, you know, understood that the value of education, the value of doing something after my career um, was was equally important, right, of, of while you are in your career. Right. Um, and, and I think that's the most difficult question professional athletes have to ask themselves is that, you know, you finish your, you finish your life. Right. And I would say it's right. literally life and death situations. Right. Um, yeah. And you have to be reborn again and you have to kind of think about what's next. Um, and it's so hard. You know, I think where I am right now, I have some friends that are, that are around me that have also recently retired and they're still dealing with that anxiety and depression of sitting on the couch or being throwing themselves into a corporate job and, still trying to find purpose in what they do. Um, and, and I, I can kind of give, you know, a background of what I do now is that I still, now I give back to the game that gave so much to me. Um, you know, I, I have the ability to mentor kids on the mental aspect of the game. Uh, I have the ability to help the next generation of kids that hopefully have the same opportunities as me that I had when I was a, a young kid and help them understand the value of certain opportunities and taking advantage of those and, and living up to it, you know, of the best of their ability and their benefit. Right. Yeah. So um, I think being involved still in the game has helped me tremendously take that next step. Um, the last thing I wanted to do was coach or get into coaching, even though I love doing that, but I just thought to myself, gosh, the pressure that we live under for such a long time, I feel like whenever you get into coaching, you're just getting back into that same exact pressured world. And it's, uh, it's not an easy one, right? It's not an easy one. Um, you know, getting criticized for certain things or, you know, uh, making friendships that are, are they true friendships, right? Or making great teammates and knowing if they those friendships might not last forever. And I think coaching kind of goes back into that, that world. So for me, now I get to be on the flip side of things and still help the game grow in a, in a massive way, but help the next generation of guys that hopefully have the same opportunity as I did. Ah, it's wonderful. I think you're doing a great job. Thank so you. for everybody who doesn't know uh, what he's, 
what he's doing. Your company's name is Beyond Goals, correct? You started that with a few other guys, correct? I started that just myself and uh, right. an uh, ex-teammate that I had here in Atlanta United. He was our captain here. So yeah, it's called Beyond Goals Mentoring. And uh, that's what we do. We just serve as a, a guide and a mentor for um, all these young kids that are aspiring pros um, we work with a lot of elite athletes, but at the same time, we work with a lot of kids that are troubled children or kids that are just looking f- to get from point A to point B, whether it's, you know, on var- or on JV and getting to varsity within high school, right? right. Uh, I think all the skill sets and all the qualities and assets and uh, traits that I had as a player um, was because of the person that I was, right? Yeah. Um, be- what I had here and probably not just that God given talent. And that's what created such a long career and a successful one. And, um, you know, now we get to have the ability to help kids that whatever they decide to do in life, whether it's, you know, the small percentage of the 0.001 kids that will actually make it. It's very hard to say that, but there's a very small percentage that of kids that that will even make it professionally, but all of those same traits and those assets that, that we had, and now we get to share with, with kids, they will use that in any environment that they, that they're in um, within whatever work environment, you know, you look, you look in today's corporate world or, you know, uh, whatever it may be, there are always people that probably were heavily involved in sports, people that are VPs, people that are high and successful in, in corporate world are people that were, captains of their football team or captains of their volleyball team or soccer team and people who know how to really work in team environment. And so we really try and teach that as well for all these kids, those leadership qualities um, and many different things that that can help them be successful in whatever they do in life. Yeah. I like it. Love it. Awesome. And I know it's hard trying to figure that out. You know, you do something for so long that you love and you're like, what do I do now? (laughs) Like, so it's great that you're giving back to the sport that that you've had so many amazing experiences and love for. So that's Thank awesome. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Listen, I have had so much fun and I hope that you will continue to be a repeat guest. Because <laughs> you're one of my favorites. <laughs> you can talk about anything and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I still have more to talk about. Come on, no, no. <laughs> we can we can keep going. Shoot, I got. Oh, no. <laughs> we need to get you back on though. Yeah, for sure. If you get Missy and I on this, you're not gonna shut up. So <laughs> I don't ever shut up. So it's that's like, a good you know, thing though. Yeah, that's a good thing. Like, I've got an empty nest now. Like my youngest just moved off to college. Like I was telling someone the other day, they were like. You don't even mind being at work. I said, not at all. I have nothing to do. My kids are gone. I have a four pound dog and that's it. I get to focus on whatever I want now. Oh, these are like, so nice. these are the yes. golden years. They're the golden years. <laughs> Greg, also you were talking about your Cincinnati, like the first thought of Cincinnati. And I'm not from Cincinnati either. I'm actually from Buffalo, New York. So my experience was the complete opposite of yours. I came from like the snow, the cold, you came from and the came from the warm. <laughs> <laughs> so like the opposite of you i was like oh this is warm this is great and you're sitting over there like this okay. is complete shit yeah. what are we doing here <laughs> if there's one place that lives in cincinnati <laughs> okay. i've ever said so <laughs> work work says the weather absolutely the weather i went sucks. there i went there for a workers comp really <laughs> I went in May. Listen, listen. I went in May and I took like shorts. I took, uh, you know, I mean, here in Atlanta, May is our blazing hot. Oh, yeah. I landed. I want to say it was like May 24th. It was freaking snowing. Okay, was this like two years? Was it recent? I landed. It was snowing in Buffalo. In the, in the- was it recent? Was it in the past? Yeah, it was last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> End of May. I was like, are you kidding me? Like black yeah. ice in May? Right. I mean, it's, it's so crazy. So my birthday and I have a sister, her birthday is in May. And so the past two years I've been in Buffalo for both of those, uh, like around the same time in May and it's, it's snowed. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's amazing. Nothing wrong with snow, but just, I, I don't know. If not you, in May. Come yeah, on. Well, I'm just going to say not. We're now. over that. <laughs> God. They're like Aspen or you know Colorado, but not not in Buffalo. Yeah, <laughs> but I haven't really been to Atlanta. I think I drove through um, 
a couple times, but I mean, I hear great things about Atlanta. Yeah. It gets hot, but it's high Atlanta, that's for sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I was I was there in April for that leadership conference and uh, was like I think it was my, like I was there for like three nights and it was my last night there and I was so tired like sitting and, and listening to these these guys um, literally was I was f- like five women out of 150 men there but listening to being an active listener for 12 hours that day I was exhausted so it was last my last night in Atlanta I didn't want to go out anywhere. Uh, so I thought, all right, I'm just going to get my laptop, do some writing. I'll go down to the bar, get a glass of wine and like order some food. So I go down there. I've got my laptop and I've got like my, my earbuds in. And anyways, I pull one out and I'm like, Hey, listen, I'm just looking for a glass of wine. Like what, what Chardonnays do you have? And so he gives me this list. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just one glass. And let me see your menu for food. He was like, Oh, just FYI, our, uh, our credit card machine's broken down. I said, no, I've got plenty of cash. And this older gentleman looks over at me and he said, <laughs> listen, I don't know where you're from, but in Atlanta, you don't say that out loud. (laughs) I was like, okay, great. Point taken. I don't have cash at all. We're good. (laughs) There are certain parts of Atlanta to where like, if you pump your gas and like leave your door open as you're pumping your gas, like that's a no go. Right. What? I've had a cop. I have a cop come and stop me while I'm pumping my gas and my front door is still open because I'm just, you know, getting out of the car, pumping gas and my door is open. I'm about to get back in my car. Right. right. And it's like I, the cop literally told me I am not responsible. If somebody comes and steals your car right now, I will not chase him because oh. you know, oh. while you're pumping gas, it's like, well, buddy, I'm from Texas, man. It's like <laughs> get out of their car and come pump my gas for me and be like, right. Tell me your life story, right? Uh, right. right. Not, not I'm from Texas. I want to hear about your brothers, your sisters, yep. your aunts. So my, my dad. If my dad is in an elevator with somebody. You know <laughs> life story by the time they get to the second. <laughs> Just how it is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Atlanta's a whole different scene. <laughs> it's beautiful though. Like it's a beautiful city. So green. There's so many trees. I think it's yeah. like the second or third cities um, with with you know tree per square foot um that's oh yeah yeah atlanta has lots of you know trees wildlife it's pretty cool yeah it's beautiful there i mean you don't live in an ugly city no and i'm not i don't think cincinnati's ugly no i'm not miserable here (laughs) ugly it's just that when you have one mall that sucks <laughs> or like, we need to do a little. Uh, that's all you have. You can't go to Kenwood every day. Is that what it's called? Right? Please tell me I'm right. Kenwood, What's it called? Yeah, yeah Kenwood. Yeah. yeah. You can't go to Kenwood every day and tell me you're the happiest person alive. Right? <laughs> I, I don't actually. I shop online more than I do anything. I don't even. I rarely see them all. Right. Yeah. I can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> What was the, um, what's the place there in Atlanta with all the food? I went there for the, like the H&F Burger place. Yeah, Pond, Pond City Market. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. yeah. We need a place like that in Cincinnati. That Anything place. with food, I'm in. Let's go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, like, now that I'm retired, I've like dedicated every month to like take two or three days and I'll just go somewhere. Yeah. Um, and just kind of, you know, when you're playing, I, I got to go over, I think maybe 45 or 50 countries within my career. Um, but I never really got to truly experience them, right? You're just going from plane, right. bus, hotel, right. hotel, bus, stadium, and back on a plane and you're gone. Um, but now, you know, I, that's, I'm such a big foodie. So everywhere I go, it's like Me too. I'm yelping, I'm yelping every, you know, <laughs> coffee junkie. Too, 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 too. So, exactly. Nice. That's it's cool. hard though, because like you said when you're like in season and doing all that stuff you have to be super strict so now you can just do whatever you want it doesn't that matter. is true my life goal is to have some sort of pack in my stomach and it's not a not, <laughs> not a six pack of beer um, <laughs> that is like my life goal is to somehow stay fit the rest of my career because it's a balance you know Misty and I talk about this all the time. It's a balance. Yeah, I mean, like, tonight I had fish tacos, right? And I'll probably, yeah. I'm the type of person where I, like, I'll watch The Rock on Instagram and be like, oh, my gosh, The yes. Rock is, like, up at 1 a.m. and going to the gym. Well, I'm going to go at 1230 at night, so. You know, <laughs> but, but I'm you the type of person. If I didn't go to the gym, like, and I go to sleep, I'm such a task check person. If I didn't, if I did not do the gym or not, not go to the gym during the day. And that was like on my task list of the day, which it is every day. 
yeah. uh, then I'm that person that is going to wake up in the middle of the night and I'll probably go to the gym. Like that is on. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I, I get a little bit of anxiety, I guess, if I'm like, okay, I'm going to make it to the gym today. And then after work, I like go home. like, oh. that. See, that's a bunch of stuff. I All think that. Yeah. if I were to say like the most difficult thing for me after retiring was creating, I mean, I was very task list based and very ritual mm-hmm. based. Whenever I played, I had to do certain things at certain times. Um, yeah. But I would say creating a schedule and finding a new routine for me has been probably the hardest thing. And now I'm finally at it to where I feel a little bit more comfortable. But in the very beginning, right? You're, oh you're, yeah. When you're a player, you have your whole entire month made out for you right right your administrator gives you a schedule and it's like timely you know every day everything it's thought out for you (laughs) (laughs) and uh you know i think i always we always tell people we always joke around the only thing that i needed to know was what color polo i needed to travel with (laughs) did you ever mess that up did you ever get the wrong Oh, soccer guys are the most irresponsible people. Ever. Oh. You forget everything. And there's always somebody there for you to pick up, you know, pick up the pieces, whether it's the equipment manager, whether it's the oh guy. guys, the, yeah. yeah, it's all That's these awesome. people that are always there for you. Uh, yeah. And then whenever you retire, you're like, holy shit, I have to. <laughs> I don't have those people have there anymore. Shit on my own right now. And so it's, <laughs> that's that's such a difficult process to create a schedule for yourself and, you know, time phone calls and create, you know, different yeah. tasks for yourself. That's probably been like the hardest thing for me, but now I'm finally getting used to it. Yeah, makes sense. So, so you have a daily workout plan. Do you design your own workouts or are you just... Um, you have a trainer? Like, how are you working that out? You know what? I think that's the coolest thing about having the ability to play for so long is that I still have workouts. I was smart. Oh, yeah. I saved yeah. so many workouts, and I still do the same exact workouts as I would when I was playing. You should send them to us. We want to do some workouts. Sure. That sounds great. <laughs> I'll try it. Let me try it. I'm, my workouts are like 20 to 25 minutes maximum. Like so I am, awesome. I am in and out and like, I am still, I, I hope to say I'm still well maintained. Right. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, but I'm just that type of person. I get in, I do my work, I go through my sets and boom, I'm done for the day. Nice. Right? Nice. Um, Very nice. Try and eat healthy and, you know, I'll splurge uh, when I have my kids on the weekends. So that's when I'll, that's yeah. when I'll with them have a pizza every once in a while. But other than that, I still kind of hold myself pretty accountable. I still have, I think I'll always have that like, professionalism mentality of, you know, holding yourself accountable to, to that high expectation of your, that you're holding yourself. Right. Thank you everybody for tuning in and listening. Please, please subscribe, rate and review us. Let us know what other things you want to hear more on. We'll see you all soon. Thank you. And thank you, Greg, for being a part of our show this week. Yes. Absolute pleasure. <laughs>